Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Xenoblade Chronicles Review. Oh, dear. This probably is going to be the longest freaking video I've ever done uh, for a game. <laughs> so, where the I guess story is probably the best. Let's play start. So, Xenoblade. It's basically about a planet of nothing a water with only two dead gods on it. These gods are giants. And this is all the land in the world. All life lives on the Bionis and the Makonis. Two ancient gods that fought a long time ago. And both completed each other's, well, the life. The two are connected by the Makonis' sword that stabbed into the... I think it was swung into the side of the Bionis, to find them quickly, but... So basically, this happened a long time ago, and now, you know, thousands of years in the future, this robotic race called the Mechon basically attack the life forms on the Bionis. They come from the Mechonis, and, well, they just kill shit. <laughs> so, the Homs, who live uh, in the lower area of the Bionis, around uh, its need hip side area, uh, have a war with them, and they found an ancient sword called the Monado. And, uh, only one person could wield it, and, well, he was able to successfully push back the Mechon and supposedly win. So it's been several years later, and, you know, it's like all peaceful and everything, and you can take control of Shulk, whose best friends are Wine and, uh, Fiona. And, well, needless to say, for Japanese RPG storylines, um, the Metcon come back. So, yeah, ye your entire town gets born to the ground. Anyway, um, a new Metcon appears who has a face. The other Metcon just look like weird robots and shit, but this looks like a humanoid robot, so, um... It basically devastates the town, kills one of your friends, and sets your group on a journey of vengeance to stop the Mechon from destroying everything. So, you get bound into, uh, you know, obviously a big story with a lot of past things, and oh boy, is it doozy at the end of what the hell is going on. <sighs> Did not see that coming. Anyway, we're not going to be going into that, not in this video. I'm going to make a Secondary videos are going more detail about spoiler and stuff. But anyway, needless to say, things are going to get clump, um, <clears throat> going to get complicated really quickly. So anyway, that, that's a basic gist of the beginning of the story. So combat, combat, it's very MMO based. Uh, basically, if you played Final Fantasy XII, you'll be a little familiar, or if you've actually played MMOs. But I'm saying, if we're talking about solo MMO kind of environment. Well, actually, to be honest, I don't... Is there even anything else? I, I know, there probably is, but I'm, I can't think of any off the top of my head. But anyway, um, unlike Final Fantasy XII, however, um, well, there's a few, obviously, different concepts. Uh, again, similar to Final Fantasy XII, you control main character and others uh, are AI-based. But unlike Final Fantasy XII, that has a command list that, you know, you set up like a thick and thing for it to focus on for an action, like enemy at 100%, enemy weakened, enemies blind, or stuff like that, with an action corresponding to that. Um, your two AI killers are just controlled by the AI. The most you can really do is focus on this target, come to me, or split out attack, you know, attack separate enemies or that. But, um, now, uh, a really unique aspect of the combat is, well, three things, really. First thing is friendship. Friendship has multiple uses in the game. Every character has a relationship of how familiar and friendly they are towards everyone in your party. So, actually everyone in the world, technically towns, NPCs and that, but the towns and that don't matter for combat. For combat, we're talking about just strictly your party. Now, how that corresponds in combat is it can slightly affect a few 
things, but mainly the big effect is the the uh, chain attack. The chain attack, once you fill up your party gauge, which is in the top left, <coughs> the party gauge, you can do a chain attack. A chain attack is where all the party members will surround an enemy and basically just throw attack after attack of your selection. You can choose all of those, but what's good is the better the friendship between the three, the more likely the chain can keep going past three. Um, I forgot what the max is, but it's pretty high. Now, to make the most use of the chain attack, you want to use the same color. Basically, all the uh, skills have different colors. So, if you stick with red, the next red and so on will be stronger and stronger. Now, to make a chain attack even higher than you, what you probably could do, since, like, usually blue or buffs and healing and red is attacks, and uh, pink is usually attack, too, but the um, point in yellow is uh, a few attacks and buffs and stuff. Yeah, overall, there's different functionality, so majorly you would think you would use red, but you can also have different other colors. So if you're in a situation where, like, well, I don't have any more of this color, but I want the chain to keep going, the, the, the uh, combo meter, per se, uh, the Monado, which is what the main character will wield, and we're going to talk more about that after this, the Monado will change the color of the chain into a color st- so the next color after the Monado will then become the new color. So you could do like three red, then let's say you want to change it to blue for whatever reason, use a Monado, and then do all blue, or start with blue and then turn it red, or, but, uh, or pink and then red. Or, so you can make the chain really high, and with a lot of friendship, you can keep that chain going, dealing all kinds of massive damage, like hell. Whoo! Now, the other unique concept in the combat is the Monado itself. Shulk! Let's see, the Monado gives Shulk visions of the future. No, back to the future music. Damn you. Damn you, copyright! Okay, anyway. Um, basically, you get visions of the future. And it's not just... it. It, it does take place in the story, but it's also part of the combat. Whenever anyone's going to fatally die, take critical damage, major status effects and shit that's life-threatening, you will get a vision of it. And the vision will show you what it does, status effect, damage, and then it will start the timer that will tick down to when it really happens. In real time, you will get a chance to completely change the new future. Now, you can either delay it by using stuns and shit, but usually when you stun in that, it will just, it just resets the time, or it doesn't stop it. There are alternate ways of stopping it, or, well, well, to be honest, you're not really stopping it, it's more like you're preventing the outcome of it. For example, basically, uh, there are different colors of the, uh, the, uh, divisions. One, you use, uh, the Monado Shield the Monado speed, and you can also use sword and skills that can affect the damage. Like, for example, Shella, who will be one well, of your major heroes, has a skill that basically will, like, block. Every time you power it up, it blocks more damage, but let's let's just say 1,000 damage. So, let's say it's going to do 3,000 damage, and now it does 2,000. So you can either lessen the effect, or sometimes outright just completely block it, like the Monado Shield totally nullifies the ones that are related to it. Why speed allows characters to dodge, but only certain vision, sk- only certain skills can be blocked by certain things. And then ethel skills, there's no 100% to block an ethel-based skill. But there are more ways to lessen its damage, usually, so. <sighs> oh boy. But um, the Monado is probably one of the most important items in the game, which is why I think it's really a shame that you're only limited to three party members. I really think the game could have had a lot more interesting things if it was four, because the tank heal and DPS in me doesn't like breaking tradition in a way. 
Though I did use a lot of other kills, uh, mainly like Wiki. I, I used Wiki, Fiona. I did not use Millennia as much. I used Dumban a few times, but not a whole lot. Most of my plays it was Wine, Shella, and Shulk. But there were different situations. And even a boss I had to use Millennia on, which I like that. I like situations where every character has, like, there was a boss that Dumban was good for, and there was a boss that uh, Millennia was good for. And that, that's good. I like that. I really do like that. Uh, Millennia is completely ethyl based, which is why she was good on a certain boss. But anyway, uh, going on, uh, you kill those, you got Shulk, mainly kind of a mixed bag. He has a heal, he has a lot of DPS, and he can block things, and he can kind of tank, so he, he can kind of fulfill most roles. Kind of like a Red Mage, but not a master of anything, really, except maybe DSP, uh, D <sighs> DPS. But... Wine is a tank, and, well, that's pretty much it. He's a tank. He's not really good at damage dealing. I mean, he can do some damage. He has one skill in particular that does massive damage in chains, but overall his use is tanking groups. Shella, heal. She has several buffs that can also be assistant. Mm, she does have attacks, like she can daze and stuff. Overall healing, though, is main specialties. Now, Wiki. Ho oh, ho. Wiki is a very interesting killer. He's basically a thief with debuffing skills and one heal skill. But he's a thief type killer with the most natural health. Now, I'll get to me, I'll get to why I mean natural health. He even has more natural health than wine. And he's a thief killer with debuffs. He is also a massive damage dealer who's good at attacking from behind, so very awesome kill. One of my favorites, by the way. Uh, Dumban is a mix of a tank DPS a little. But, um, well, it's kind of a mixed bag with it. I think Dumban works better focusing on a single target. But he's not good when it comes to a lot of targets, because, like, Wine has skills that help him catch aggro on multiple enemies. Uh, Millennia, like I said before, is a very ethereal base. She's ethereal is magic, by the way, uh, in case I haven't mentioned that yet. Um, so basically, she's like your mage, and she has very, a lot of elemental skills. Uh, she plays a lot different from all the killers, to be honest. But, um, she's not worthless either. I know I did not really use her a lot. Um, but she she is actually useful. Actually, thinking about it, seeing how she works, I could have actually made uh, several uses with her. Fiona is, um, well, well, I can't really talk much about Fiona much, to be honest. So I'll uh, leave that for the next video, to be honest. Anyway, going on. <coughs> Let's see. What was I... Oh, yeah. So, now, what I meant by, like, natural HP is... Basically, there's a concept of... You, you ever play, like, uh, Diablo 2 or, or World of Warcraft or... Try to think of uh, games that had this mechanic. In. Basically, it's a gym idea. You know, you have your gear, you have slots, and you put stuff in them that boosts stuff. There are HP, every stat, uh, unique ones that resist or insist in you uh, dealing so on buffs and debuffs and stuff. Um, all your equipment can be uh, have gym slots. Now, there are two types of equipment that can have gyms. Uh, basically, there's three types of equipment. Gymless equipment, uh, equipment with gym slots, or a piece of equipment with a gym in it all the way. These types of equipment cannot be changed, the gyms in them. That is. So, like, if it has a strength gym in it, it's stuck in it. You can't take it off or customize it. So, um, 
that can be annoying with someone gear upgrades. Like, you might find a weapon that increases all wine stats, but you don't like any of the forced gems in it. You want these other gems you have in the other weapon. So it causes a little debate and thought, and a little strategic in that. And since many of the characters can have actually fulfill different roles, like Wiki can Wiki and Dumban can be a tank. The efficiency in it, in my opinion, is much less than wine, but they can. Everyone can do different things. So it's you you can do a lot of different strategies with your poly setup that um I just went really simplistic to be honest. Um I really wish uh, you could have had a fourth character. It wouldn't make you, if you played MMOs, it wouldn't make you feel so needy to pick who you think is the best hero and tank for most situations. So, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much with equipment, combat, and that. Now, uh, if you haven't already got the realized idea, the max party is three in combat, so you can switch anyone in and out that includes Shulk. You do not have to have Shulk in your party. Which is a very nice touch, to be honest, because, you know, I can't be the only one that just sometimes feels like, you know, maybe in the beginning it's okay, but, you know, after a little point, it'd be interesting, you know, if you could just blow the main character out and just go hell out with the little characters, you know what I mean? I mean, like, I'd love to try and have a party without Zod, uh, Zandine, uh, Zod, <laughs> Zod, uh, I can't say his name today, uh, the thief, the main character from Final Fantasy, Zod, Zodane, I'd love to make a party, uh, without Zodane, without it being a forced game moment, not that I'm just saying he's the whole, most worst character ever or anything, just saying, I think it's an interesting idea that, you know, just have the customization of it. So, for the get go, once you get four killers, you you can throw Shulk out and put whoever else in that. It's interesting. Nice touch. Now, uh, continuing the MMO, the MMO-like uh, system of the game, um, there's lots of quests, items to gather. There's a lot of variety in there. Um, I did not do extensive amounts of the side quests. I did do a good... I would say a good, decent amount. And there are all, actually a lot of rewards for completing side quests that I did not get. Like, for example, which is, uh, I know a mechanic I have to explain, but how about we just start off like this. Skill trees. Now, um, the skills I was referring to in combat are called arts in the game. But, uh, you know, I hope you forgive me, I refer to them as skills, but they'll refer to as arts in the game. Skills are from your skill tree, which are like mainly passive related things that each character can have. Now every character has three three separate trees, but actually here's something I never got in the game that you could get. There are all side quests and everyone has different ways of getting this, but there are actually two secret trees for every character, and most of them are gone through side quests, or at a eventual point through chains of side quests. And you gotta work hard, as far as I understand, to get them. So, it's, it's obvious why I didn't get them. I didn't even completely, or hell, I didn't even like halfway repair Colony 6, because that required a lot of rare items and stuff that I kept putting into the collection thing all the and ended up screwing myself there. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get on that. Anyway. <clears throat> now, uh, to go into the skill tree, this is what's interesting. Now, don't you always hate it when you're given a whole bunch of characters and you don't make use of all of them. For example, Final Fantasy VI, at the end of the game, you make use of almost every single character except, I believe, two if you got everyone. And I'm pretty sure you know what I mean by that. But anyway, if you got everyone, I'm pretty sure you had to leave two behind, but pretty much use everyone, almost. Or if you did not get them. Actually, technically, I think there's like three missable killers you never meet, forced to meet, I believe, in the game, so. But whatever. Anyway, the point is, 
that game made awesome use of all your characters. And then in the final battle, you could basically, they, you all made them in a list, and if they died, they would get replaced to the next, next force of that. Final Fantasy VIII also made use of that concept in the final battle. But, you know, a lot more modern RPGs don't make use of it. Like, for example, Final Fantasy IX, probably one of my favorite RPGs, completely makes no use of all its party members at the end, really. You pick your party, and bam, you gotta fight to find the boss. So, here's what Xenoblade does that makes this more interesting to make all your characters useful. So, you get affinity coins. Affinity coins allow you to basically link skills from the skill tree from one character to another. Basically, giving one character's skill to another. So, like, let's say... Um, I, I can't remember everyone's skill thing, but I know these skills exist on someone. Let's say there's one that boosts HP. So I want to link it to Shulk, but it's online. So I'll use 10 Infinity Coins and take it, boom. Now Shulk has that skill linked to him, so now he gets a 10% increase in HP. So, but, um... See, there's two reasons why you do have to use your other characters to make this more useful, though. Basically, each skill on the skill tree has a different shape. And when you go to the link menu of a character, the amount of friendship towards that character will unlock different shapes for you to link. So you'll have the, the lowest affinity relationship, then the next up, next up, all the way until max. So, the more their party likes each other, the more you can link their skills to each other when you get more affinity coins for leveling up, killing unique fights and stuff. Of all, taking the best traits from other characters and attaching them to other characters. And this is a very good way to make characters even better in different ways. Like, you could give unique, ta like, uh, aggro ability to Wiki to make him better at tanking and stuff. So, in turn, the whole skill tree linking concept is encouraging you to use everyone so you can get the different skills attached to characters you do like. Even if you don't like one to say, use Wiki or Millennia or Wine or whoever you don't want to use or use. So, very interesting concept. I like that. Encourages you to use everyone, even though the game, in the end, does not do a similar concept like Final Fantasy VI or such, where all the characters have a main use. However, that is a different way of doing it. And I like that. It's about nothing. <laughs> so, going on. It's easy. Now, I'm trying to make sure I went over the ant ants and ants. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah, unique hunts. They're all unique, notorious monster style enemies in the game, and sometimes they're affiliated with quests, and sometimes they're just randomly out there, and you just kill them. They have uh, nice loot drops and stuff, and some of them you can kill again and again a few times and get unique drops and such. So, um, well. Nothing too horrifying to understand now. Now, I did mention something about uh, Colony 6. Later in the game, you're going to get an opportunity to fix a colony that gets destroyed. Basically, you find items off monsters or randomly in the environments that you will use to repair Colony 6. And some of these areas in the game get locked off as you progress through it, locking off certain items forever. And there's a collect them, a collecting encyclopedia that you can put all the said items in and unlock special loot. So, it's kind of a farming mechanic, so I did not find you have to do this, but if you want to acquire some of the quests and or do all the quests, or maybe uh, some of them might be uh, linked to the uh, skill tree unlocks quests, 
you may want to do that. But I didn't do it, and I, you didn't have to do it, so. But it's there if you want to. I did get to fix it a little, but not a whole bunch, to be honest. <laughs> it was mostly so a cradle in the ground. Oh, boy. But overall, uh, the game... I really enjoyed the game. And I don't want to talk much story in this video, but my next video, I'm going to talk a lot more about the story and spoils and such. So, I'll see you in the next episode.